is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is interpretation of bracketing and matrixing designs for stability testing as per ICH Q1D. Let us look into the basic understanding. The guideline says, this guide helps to design bracketing and matrixing of time stations for drug substances and drug products to explore possibilities of reducing the testing time stations with justification for degree of reduction. Try to understand the intent of each word in this. It will be easy to understand. What is bracketing? It is testing of extreme conditions of the quality parameters. If it is a drug product, bracketing is done based on the strength, fill size, etc. In such cases, it is designed to test the lowest strength and lowest fill on the lower side and the highest strength and highest fill on the upper side. In this design, the main assumption is that the product quality is linear and provides a straight line when plotted the data at all time stations. So this design of bracketing will work only when the process is validated and robust enough and represents all strengths and fill sizes. It is necessary to establish this fact through validation exercise with various combinations before attempting the bracketing design for stability. The main intent of bracketing is to optimize the time and testing resources. Let us see how it works for APIs. For APIs, mostly the strength will not vary. It will be around 98 to 100% always. So strength parameter cannot be selected for bracketing design. If the API is packed in plyboard corrugated boxes, fiber drums or HTPA drums, in such cases, bracketing could be done for the two extremes, the plyboard corrugated boxes on the least protected type up to the HTP drums, the most protected type. For other parameters, bracketing may be planned for purest batch and the batch that passed at lower limits to represent the extremes. Other options are very less in API's case. The degree of reduction in time stations and types of bracketing is possible only when knowledge on data variability knowledge on data variability is available you should understand the variability knowledge as statistical variability it is a dispersion of data you can call it as data spread also this is a measure of how far the data is moving around the main value this can be established only by statistical analysis expected stability of the product the expected shelf life is established by linear regression analysis this is not very difficult but it is hard to understand for the beginners after few trials it can be easily achieved you can you may have to practice with several examples to get a real feel of it. This predicts the shelf life of the product for the coming up time stations very accurately. Availability of supporting data. The detailed statistically amenable supporting data availability also plays important role in designing the bracketing or matrixing. Stability differences within or among many factors. 
number of factors combinations in the study. These two things generally work well for dosage forms. They are, they are, they are not much relevant for APIs. The potential stability differences among various factors may have to be considered while bracketing design is proposed. Few examples for number of factor combinations could be capsules of different strengths made with different fill plug sizes from the same powder blend or tablets of different strengths manufactured by compressing varying amounts of the same granulation and oral solutions of different strengths with formulations that differ only in Meyer excipients. Let us see bracketing. Bracketing is designed based on the extremes of design factors. So as discussed, the extreme conditions are selected for bracketing design. Design considerations should be based on the potential risks. Design factor considerations are done based on the potential risk factors to the product quality. The risk factors can be established by quality risk management principles. ISHQ9 gives a very detailed insight into various tools to address the potential risks and recommend mitigation plans. Risk assessment should discuss the impact on the shelf life of the product on extreme factors. The risk assessment should focus on the shelf life of the product under extreme conditions. The risk assessment is to establish the assumption that the shelf life of the product in the excluded intermediate time stations is within acceptable limits. If there is a failure in any extreme factors, the design should be modified to bracketing the intermediates. Obviously, if there is a risk identified which cannot be mitigated, the bracketing should be done for tighter or narrower ranges. The shelf life of the intermediates should not be more than the least stable extreme. This is another important point to note. The study design should not exceed the minimum shelf life at the extreme study conditions. Let us see the bracketing examples. See this bracketing example. The drug product bracketing design covers the minimum strength, maximum strength, minimum fill and maximum fill sizes. You can see that the medium strength and fill size is avoided for testing. As discussed earlier, the model for API could be like this. The least protected corrugated box and most protected HTP container. Also, the smallest pack size and the largest pack size is also considered for bracketing design for APIs. Matrixing. There are two types of matrixing generally accepted. They are one half reduction and one third reduction. Let us look into the concept of matrixing. It is arrangement of several combinations in columns and rows design. The intention is to encompass the entire exercise to represent with a reasonable accuracy. Basically, the reduction on time points is done in two ways, one half and one third. One half reduction eliminates half of the time points. For example, if there are two types, that means two strengths with three samples each, there are six test points. The strategy is to test only three samples, which is half of the total samples, that is three out of six. 
So, in one half reduction, half of the total time points is eliminated. In this example, 3 out of 6 are eliminated. Similarly, the one third reduction eliminates 2 test points. Only 4 are tested, that is 4 out of 6. So, in one third, 1 in every 3, that means 2 out of 6 are eliminated. So, the tally becomes 4 time points out of 6 are tested. We can see the examples in the next slide. Let us see some matrixing examples. One half reduction for drug product. Let us see the examples here for one half reduction. In this table, only three batches are considered for testing at three months time station. They are one, two, and three. Same pattern can be seen for six months, nine months, 18 months, and 24 months. But please note that they are staggered. They are not in the same type of testing, but they are all staggered. But also notice that full testing is done at 0 time, at 12 months and 36 months. Let us see the example of one half reduction for APIs. So, for APIs the one half reduction may be designed like this. Since there is less probability of several strengths of APIs, the least protected corrugated boxes and the most protected HTTP containers are selected for bracketing. Testing strategy is similar to the drug product design that was discussed in the earlier slide. Let us see the example for one third reduction for drug product. One third reduction is eliminating two out of six samples. So, only 4 are tested. The example describes the design for drug products like this. Here also you can see it is only 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4, only 4 samples. The remaining testing strategy is same as described above. This example is for one third reduction for APIs. This is similar to the one half reduction design with four samples tested with the same strategy as described above. Let us see other important points. In general, a matrixing design is applicable if the supporting data indicate predictable product stability. Matrixing is appropriate when the supporting data exhibit only small variability. The supporting variability data should indicate the predictable shelf life statistically. If the variability is small, then the bracketing and matrixing design may be applied successfully. However, where the supporting data exhibit moderate variability, a matrixing design should be statistically justified. If the supportive data show large variability, a matrixing design should not be applied. Detailed justification is required for a moderate variability for bracketing and matrixing designs and no such designs are possible when there is large variability of data. A statistical justification could be based on an evaluation of the proposed matrixing design with respect to its power to detect differences among factors in the degradation rates or its precision in shelf life estimation. This point is important for drug products. Justification could be based on 
the capability of the design to detect the differences in degradation rates and precision in shelf life estimation. There are other designs also for three strength and three container sizes, but the approach is similar to the above. At the end, it is necessary to justify any design would represent the entire range of strengths and fill sizes. These are given as table 3A and 3B in the guideline. Let us look into other potential risks and evaluation. There is a possibility of less precise outcome on estimation of shelf life of the product. Guideline says that due to the reduced amount of data collected in the matrixing design on factors other than time points generally has less precision in shelf life estimation and can lead to shorter shelf life than the corresponding full design. For drug product matrixing there is a possibility of having insufficient power to detect certain main interaction effects leading to incorrect pooling of data. For drug products, even if matrixing is done fully scientifically, incorrect pooling data may lead to insufficient power to detect such main interactions to establish the shelf life. Even excessive reduction in combinations, insufficient capability to detect pooling can make it impossible to predict the shelf life. Data evaluation for reduced testing should be similar to the full design testing. Q&E guideline should be used for evaluation of data. I hope that the understanding of ICHQ and D is better now. Generally, the API manufacturers skip this guideline. The guideline mostly addresses the drug product bracketing and matrixing because of many common factors in formulation. However, the scope of the guideline includes the drug substance also. So drug substances or APIs which are packaged in different types of schemes may also be considered for bracketing and matrixing. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe like and share. Thank you.